brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's cereal. The best to you each morning. From Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. gentlemen, and on my left, the Roger Maris of panelists, our guest, Martin Gable. On my left, live from New York at long last, Miss Arlene Francis. Well, I'd always been live, Mr. Gable. <laughs> And now, a gentleman who is helping to make Random House one of the great names in the publishing business, Mr. Bennett, sir. And here's our distinguished panel moderator and news analyst, a man who has absolute contempt for any word under four syllables, <laughs> Mr. John Charles Day. <laughs> I should like, first of all tonight, to put into the record that I was proud of my colleagues, Dorothy and Arlene and Bennett, last Monday night, and I've got a secret. I thought they turned in a wonderful performance. I'm hoping they'll do as well tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we are happy to welcome all of you to the theater who have come here to New York tonight to see what's my line, and needless to say, it's good in this lovely uh, autumn of this year of 1961 to say hello to all the folks at home. We're changing the rules a bit tonight, and uh, so we're going to get right into what's my line, and let's meet our first contestant. Pat Taggart, is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs. Miss. Taggart? Miss Taggart, and where are you from? New York City. New York City. Mm -hmm. Well, then may I present our panel. I'm sure this is a formality. You're familiar with them all. And now will you join me over here, Miss Taggart? Uh, you know how we keep score and what's my line? Yes, I do. All right, then we'll let the audience in the theater, <coughs> the audience at home, know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Miss Taggart is salaried and deals in a service with which, at least in our view, there is an interesting product connected. And uh, we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Martin Gable. John? Miss Taggart, uh, is your service in any, in any way related to the sporting world? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not clever on my part, it's just seasonal. Uh, has it anything to do with a sport that's sometimes known as the national pastime? Yes. Has it anything to do with the upcoming World Series? Yes. <laughs> well, I think I'd better stop. She's not playing. <laughs> uh, have you anything to do, Miss Taggart, with the distribution of prize tickets for that World Series? Yes, I do. Uh, do you handle the World Series tickets? Yes. <laughs> John, John, before you give her the fifty dollars, how about a couple, Miss Taggart? <laughs> well, there's one thing we do immediately. I won't have that kind of thing happening at what's my line. Martin, we did this, I must say, I'm sure all of you know, uh, because Martin Hapley is with us so much, this is probably one of the greatest baseball fans in the United States of America. There was a method in my madness. I started with Martin, because I, I was hoping he wouldn't even come close to it, but he fooled me. <laughs> Miss Taggart is, a, is a secretary to the New York Yankees, and uh, you, you handle these, these ticket sales every yes. year, don't you? Yes. Well, now, let, if I may, um, 
How long a job is the handling of the tickets? Is this something that hap began to happen to you three weeks ago or last week or two no, weeks ago? six weeks ago. Six weeks ago? Six weeks ago? And do they come in in an absolute flood then? Uh, yes. Just more than you could possibly hope to handle? Yes. Do you ever get letters, say, oh, several months before a World Series, just on the off mm -hmm. chance that the Yankees are going to win, saying, I want some tickets for the when World the Series? When the season opens. When the season opens, when the actually, season opens, in, the, in, in spring, you get letters. Yes, you do. Do these get... Sorry, Miss Marley? No, I just wanted to ask Miss Taggart if by any chance my husband had contacted her previously. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's Ms. ask Taggart a question. Then. Yeah, please, let's. Uh, what do you think of old Casey Stengel coming back to New York with the Mets? Well, it's good. I think it's great, don't you? I think anything that Casey does, so long as he's in baseball, is good for baseball. Here, here. Except here, here. teaching grammar, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does that in the wintertime, though. <clears throat> That's different, Martin. Let's ask, Martin, have you got your World Series ticket? I have been offered a pair from uh, a representative of one of the major magazines, John. Thank you very much. I have no intention of chiseling any here this evening. So that's what, what I was hoping was you'd say, yes, you had some, and I was going to chisel you. That's fair, isn't it? <laughs> that's great pleasure. I'd like to say to Miss Taggart that when my wife and I left our uh, hotel this evening, we had the pleasure of running into uh, Georgie Solitaire and the great Joe DiMaggio, and I wish he were playing this series. Yeah. Doesn't everybody? Well, as everybody knows... Uh, Something important happened today. Mr. Maris done hit that 61st there. Yes, sir. That was a big day for the Yankees. And I think one of the exciting things about baseball, Mickey Mantle was going full steam, and, and Mickey's got that trouble with, with uh, a muscle and an infection of a muscle, or maybe Mickey would have done it. He will year. play in the series, though, won't he? Well, so. I think everybody hopes so, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a matter of uh, hoping that, that the infection will clear up by the time the series get to going, right? Mm hmm. You know a lot about baseball, don't you? No, not Can't as understand much as I why. should. Well, Miss Taggart, I'm sorry that we didn't give them more of a problem, but that it was very nice of you to come down and visit us Thank on Sunday night. Thank, Thank you very much for joining us. In that well, a very good beginning panel. Let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Richard Oates, is that right? Correct. Sure. <laughs> Mr. Oates, where are you from? I'm from Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon, New York, right? Fine. May I present you to the panel? You. And join me over here, please. You know how we keep score? Yes, I Fine. do. Fine. The audience in the theater at home know exactly what your line is. panel, Mr. Oates is salaried, deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Oates, may I assume that you, you have nothing to do with baseball? Yes, you may. Uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, is your product one that I would be familiar with? Possibly. Uh, would it be something that men would know about, too? Yes. Uh, would one sex be more likely to buy it than another? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Gable. Is it something you can carry in your hand? Yes. Is it something that would show? Uh, it, uh, does one wear it? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Would the product be found in the house ever, Mr. Rose? Yes, it would. Could it also be found out of doors? <laughs> out of some doors out of some doors uh, yes in the in the very broadest sense well i, I, I think like. here there's a, there's a very critical question to be resolved i don't think arlene that we could rule out the possibility that under very special circumstances uh it might be uh found outdoors, but it would be a very extreme circumstance, wouldn't you say? Yes. In that event, I think we have to give you a no. I'm <laughs> oh, very sorry. Well. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Oates, is this product a utilitarian one? Yes, it is. Uh, 
Is it used by people? Yes. Is it, uh, would it be more likely to be stationary than be moved around? <laughs> Don't you wish you and I had gone to a night ball game or something? <laughs> Uh, I think we would have to agree that it, uh, it gets a no. Oh, well, just a moment. <coughs> I didn't expect to cause all this commotion with that question. It usually takes this long with girls. <laughs> Bennett, the fact that we had to discuss this at some length will undoubtedly indicate to you that there was a critical question here that had to be decided. We've decided it. That's no. That's four down and six to go. Let's go John, what did, what did Bennett get a no on, please? Bennett got a no on the question as to whether it was stationary or whether it moved around. It moves around. Uh, may I... Oh, wait a minute, Doctor. Does it? Well, he yes. got a no on was it stationary. It was more likely to be moved, moved around, around than it was to be stationary. Now, how did you phrase your question, I Bennett? Asked whether it was more likely to be stationary than it was to be moved around. That's and right. And, and he no. got a no. So it is not likely to be stationary, it is more likely to be moved around. That is right. Uh, may I assume that it does not move around by itself, of its own volition? <laughs> you want to go snipe hunting with me? <laughs> Dorothy, uh, what do you think on this? We're going to have to have another meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me put it this way. I would, on technicalities, tend to say that the answer should be no. Mr. Oates said that I think we would possibly mislead them if we did not say yes to this. Now, this should indicate to you that what we're suggesting here uh, in the issue of whether it moves around on its own volition or not is being decided fundamentally uh, in a most modern sense. John, if I may interrupt, in all respect, the gap between the question and the answer is so long <laughs> that my defective concentration uh, is it does it move by itself or not well in the most modern we're answering the question affirmatively but in the context of of modern technology let's put it that way <laughs> uh, uh, may i assume that this is not alive in yes. the human mm -hmm. sense of being alive, or animal sense of being alive. Yes. Is this a manufactured object? Yes. Uh, is it in any sense, um, does it have movable parts? Yes, it does. Uh, is it connected with electricity? Yes, it is. Is it plugged in when in use? Yes. Plugged in and it moves around. Hmm. <laughs> uh, is it useful rather than decorative? Yes. Uh, is its use in cleaning? Yes. Uh, is it uh, something like a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> no. Five down and five to go, Martin. The cleaning in our family is done to my left. May I pass? <laughs> <laughs> Arlene? <laughs> is it uh, something that moves around of its own volition when it is plugged in? Is that what we said in the modern sense, it moved around of its own volition? Considering modern technology, it I moves see. around as a result of the impulses which it receives from electricity. Does it move through a room instead of just moving at a window or a door? <laughs> no. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Oates, does this product of yours move around on the person of somebody? Yes. Yeah. Uh, would it uh, be used more usually above the neck than below the neck? Yes. Uh, would this be any possible part of the family of electric razors or hair massages? No. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it something other than a lint picker offer? Yes, it is. <laughs> or is it something other than a hair dryer? Yes. Uh, is it, um, could this be found in a barber shop? No, I doubt it. I would doubt it, too. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Gable. Uh, does it in any way uh, stimulate the Constitution? It can be said to stimulate areas which, uh, 
are a part of the Constitution, not of the United States. Of course. <laughs> Do you need any special training to use this? Mm. I mean, like a dentist drill well, or I've something. Oh, I got it. Excuse electric toothbrush. Electric toothbrush. Electric toothbrush. Yes. Yes, but I flipped it over. Now, this, this is one where it worked. Actually, you're with E.R. Squibb, aren't That's you? Correct. But the name of this is, is uh, the Broxidet. Broxidet, and it's only been on the market for three months, which is why it's I think just you didn't come to your It comes from Switzerland, I think, doesn't it? That's correct. It's made in and Switzerland. And I can't wait to get one. You, you mean to say that people in the United States have become so weak now they can't even do that little motion of doing a toothbrush by themselves? <laughs> I say, in all fairness, Ben, it doesn't have anything to do with their, their will or wish for physical exercise. It's more an area of uh, the efficiency with which the instrument can perform as against the manual toothbrush. And it's this just isn't... replacing the dentist, isn't That's it? That's right. It's, it, well, it, Not it, uh, this will be it. We're going to get in more trouble tonight than they can get it in the UN in, in several months. Yeah. Uh, I am not uh, technically able to hold one brief or another, but its basic premise is that it more efficiently performs the work than the work can be performed manually. Correct, sir? This is correct. Good. We thank you very much. We have a lot of fun with it, and it's nice to have you in our We'll meet our mystery guest, and now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you all know very well, the panel is always blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. 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 Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery guest, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and let's begin it with uh, Bennett Surf. Well, just to see how legitimate those whistles were, are you a pretty girl? No. Well, no. Now, what we're going to do there, and I think I have to explain it, Bennett, we have an extraordinarily handsome individual with us, but on the pure technicality of your phrasing, I'm going to give you a no. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you mind saying that again, John? I couldn't. <laughs> uh, all right. Are you in show business? Are you in show business? Yes. Was that a no? No, that was a yes. Oh. Mr. Gable? Are you uh, currently appearing on, on the Broadway stage? No. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. No. Are you uh, appearing in television? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Is, uh, you are a lady, though, and you say on a technicality, do you, did you, was that technicality because you I said to... girl? Yeah. Mm hmm Is that my question? No, that's not your question, Bennett. That's a reasonable informational point. Have you, uh, appeared recently, that is within the past few months, in a motion picture? No. Four no. down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen? No. Uh, are you known primarily for your work in nightclubs or records? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Gable. No. Uh, do you sing? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. She doesn't do anything. <laughs> are you, uh, about to appear in any of the art mediums? No. No? Yes. Oh, yes? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, Mr. Sir? <laughs> Did you ever appear in a play called Majority of One? No. What? Yes. Uh, yes? Are you yes, Molly Bird? <laughs> I rushed to explain, Arlene, we gave you a no the first time because... Um, yes, it hasn't started yet, the series. That's what? right. Mrs. G goes to college, starts on, on Wednesday night. Wednesday night. But on, she is a pretty girl. Well, she's a pretty girl, but I was afraid that if I... I said in the... 
I said an extraordinarily handsome individual, but I didn't want to give you a yes for fear that you would think we were talking about an ingenue or, or a Hollywood starlet or something. You're talking I'm, about a grandma. I'm talking about <laughs> grandma, is right. <laughs> well, needless to say, I think all of us on the panel, and, and with very special affection, remember your partner in Mrs. G Goes to College, Sir Cedric Hardwick, who's been on our panel, and on Wednesday night, which is what time? 9.30. 9.30 on Wednesday night. <coughs> Molly Goldberg and Cedric Hardwick in, a, in what I know is going to be a wonderfully funny show. And needless to say, we wish you all the success in the world with the new series. Thank you. I think it's almost for sure. <laughs> almost for sure. Like Thank it. you very much. I'm Thank sure you. we'll like it. Thank you. Thank you. Meet another contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Paul. Paul Gordon. Is that right, sir? <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Gordon? Brooklyn. From Brooklyn, New York? Yes, Fine. May I present the panel? Gordon, will you join me here? And uh, you know how we keep score? Yes, sir. Fine. We'll let the audience at home in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. Mr. Gordon is salaried. Mr. Gordon deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Well, Mr. Gordon, uh, the audience enjoyed the information of whatever your job is. Is it, is it a product that I would enjoy? Yes, very much. Uh, do you suppose I have already used this product? Yes. Uh, does almost everybody use the product sooner or later? Yes. <laughs> well, let us, let us amend that by saying quite a few, or very many do, but not necessarily all. Uh, would women use it uh, uh, more than men would use it? I'd say no. 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 One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Gordon, is your product consumed? Yes. Is it either edible or drinkable? Yes. Is it drinkable? Yes. Is it a pro is it a is it some kind of uh, drink that we have to identify? Is that right? Yes. Is it a drink that would make you feel exhilarated? Uh, no. Well, now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a very good thing to say about your drink. Let us say this, Ben. At university, we can agree that if there is a wish for liquid refreshment and it does exhilarate to one degree or another, I think in the reference of your question, we could say that this is a product which uh, would lift your spirits if you wish to take it, yes. On a hot day. May On a I hot gather day. from uh, all that palaver of Mr. Daly that this is a non-intoxicating Oh, no, that's Moses, too that's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. He said it would raise your spirits. That was a hint. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe he was being honest. In other words, you could... <laughs> you could step up to a bar and order this product. Yes, you could. In a tavern or a nightclub. Could you also find it in the home? Yes. Uh, is it... Does it have more alcoholic content than beer? No. It's beer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry we've run out of time, and you did get the product, so I think we give you a full measure here. I think you would ultimately have, have actually gotten exactly what it is Mr. Gordon does. He is with uh, the uh, Schaefer Brewing Company, and he's a beer taster, right? Yes, sir. It's his job to see that it does what it's supposed to do when they make the mixture, which is singularly and uniquely theirs. We're glad you could make it here tonight, Mr. Gordon. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gordon. I'm glad you were here tonight. And that ends another pleasant half hour. And it's, I say again, it's nice to have you with us, Martin. And good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Martin. Dorothy, Arlene. Good morning, Martin. Good night, Bennett. <laughs> good night, you intoxicating, Mr. Daly. Oh, brother. <laughs> the cold weather gets to him, too. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What My Line. What My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Topman.